All right, so we've kind of teased the idea of templates a couple times in uh, various lectures and in different um, uh, discussions and whatnot, and now we are finally going to talk about them more formally. There isn't really too much to know about them, but hopefully this kind of gives you a time to reflect, reflect and kind of look at how they work. So, um, Templates allow you to generalize an implementation <clears throat> so that uh, the implementation can work on any type. So um, one of the versions of the R vector class that we've seen in various por portions of the lecture was uh, written in terms of integers only, and so that really helped us understand the other parts of the code that we were more interested in understanding at the time, which is like understanding the different member functions, the constructor, um, the copy constructor, the square bracket operator, and uh, what we're going to do in this lecture is talk about how we can generalize uh, a class so that it is not just uh, working for a vector of integers but working for an R vector of any type. So you could put any type in the angle brackets and you can make vectors that way. So here's an example of all those different types, pushing in an int, pushing in a double, pushing in a character, or pushing in a string. And then writing all the member functions so that they can also work generally for all those different things as well. So um, we're going to start with looking at a couple of the different member functions. So here we have the copy constructor uh, here we have the square bracket operator and we have the pushback function. So we're going to go through a little exercise of um, this is the int implementation so it works sp specifically for an integer and again it's this same implementation of having a C array and then two member variables keeping track of size and capacity. Um, right here too. <laughs> and so this is all implemented as an R vector of ints. So how would we go about rewriting this um, for something general? So in order to do that, we need to find all the times that we have typed, uh, typed as in like declared a type, as an integer for an element of our R vector, and we need to change that. So I'm going to have you pause the video and go ahead and do this exercise, circle after the slides open, I guess, um, all the instances you can find of integer um, where it's the actual element of um, the R vector, not just like any integer. And then go ahead and start the video again when, when you're ready. Okay, so let's go through and actually count out all the places that we would have to change if we wanted to generalize our code to work for any element rather than just an integer element. First one I see here is when we created the C array, we have declared that the C array is going to be of type integer. Uh, looking at the rest of those, they look fine. Um, and then here we are just copying those over. Um, this looks okay because that's just using the C array notation to return the element and so it would return whatever type it is. Here's another uh, version of that in the constructor so it's the same one. So let's look in pushback. So in pushback during the expansion it also declares the integer. So I can see that there. Um, in our private member uh, variable under the private section, um, we also declare that the pointer to the C array is going to be an int type pointer, and so that would need to be changed. Um, what else do we have? Okay, so here in pushback, this value is typed to an integer value, um, but if we were trying to make it general, the pushback parameter would need to be general. And then the last one, <laughs> I'm doing this along with you, 
is the return from the operator. So that um, is going to be whatever type is stored in the C array. And so if it is generalized, that would need to also be generalized. So wait, so that's actually only six. There should be one more. So which one am I missing? Oh, here, this int star as well. So that is an int star pointer, just like this one is. Um, so it's typed to the C array type. So that's seven and seven is the right answer um, for how many there are total. So you really have to think about it, right? Especially because we chose an integer here. Um, there's all sorts of integers thrown, thrown around. There's size and capacity are integers. Um, the indexes are integers. Um, but the only ones that refer to the data structures type um, that's stored in each element is the ones circled. So the basic idea is you'd go through and you would template this um, and you would, you know, declare the template at the top and then replace all of those with the template variable that you use, which um, in our case is T. So every time you see int, you're just going to replace that with a T. Everything else is the same. So the pointers would stay and the references would stay, but you'd replace int with the T. So, um, the way that looks um, with just a few of the member variables here uh, is uh, you template, uh, you declare the template at the top of the class like that. Uh, and then um, this is what's actually determined what your templated variable is. So you can choose that. And then, um, like I said, anywhere where you had seen that int, you're going to replace it with a T. Now it's obviously not that easy to just template your code by just replacing all the integers with T's. Um, you also have to make sure that the code that you wrote is general and works for any type. So if it doesn't, then you need to overload your functions or create branches or cases that allow it to work. Um, in our case, the uh, only time we were using types was to declare the CRA. So that's okay. That can be easily uh, templated pushback and square bracket operator was just like, you know, returning or receiving an element. So those are also fine. Um, so for our case, you know, it, it was that easy, but in other codes, it might not be that easy. You can't just write it for a type and then replace all the ints with T's. So one good way to practice this is to write one on your, on your own. So you can pause the video and do this, but it's basically asking you to write a member function, a race. It's not, one of the functions that exists in our vector. Uh, and some of you, I think someone asked that, uh, you know, is there an erase function? And there's not, but you can write one. And so this is how you would do that. The behavior of the erase function is that it should delete the element at the location uh, sent in um, as the parameter i, and then it should also return that element. Um, since we have implemented our vector with an array, keep in mind that you can't really delete an element in an array. That's not really how it works. Uh, you instead uh, need to like shift it or move your, you know, pointer around or something. So that's what you get to decide. So go ahead and pause the video and think about how you would do that. Okay, so this is what a potential erase function would look like. You can see that the function is uh, written to receive the integer and return the element, but because we templated it, we need to make sure it's a T. We need to save the element, and since we don't know what type it is, we want to make it general. We're going to declare the type as T, and we'll call the uh, variable E that actually is saving the variable we're about to erase. And then um, the uh, approach uh, that we're using here is by just shifting the array over. So starting at the element that you removed, you're just going to replace that element with the element on its right, and then continue to do that until you reach the end of the array. You also need to decrement the size because now you have one less element, and then return the element. 
So that's the idea of writing the public member function erase for the R vector implementation. Uh, there are other ways to do this, um, and you could implement it all sorts of different ways. Um, and one way is to just like shift around the pointers and whatnot, but then you have to be careful about uh, your um, buffer that you've created, that C array. So in summary, when you implement data structures, um, we're going to always be using classes, right? And in those classes, we can use templates in order to keep an abstract type. Uh, this is not something that we're doing with our very first class um, in Project 3, because uh, you know when you're writing your first class, you're thinking about a lot of other things. You have memory to deal with. You have um, a lot of people are still figuring out like where stuff is declared and where you know where you actually write the code. Uh, and so there's a lot of other things to worry about. So um, we're pushing off templates until project four. So in project four, you are going to be writing test cases using a framework and also uh, writing your uh, classes using templates so that it can work on any type, which will result in what? A lot more testing because uh, with your current class that you're writing, you can just rely on testing one type, right? But then once you start uh, moving towards templated classes, that is going to multiply all of those tests by like four or five, right? So that you can test against all types. All right. So um, that is it for this video on templates.